Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to do some budget-friendly home decor that is not only beautiful, but is made out of something as simple as paper bags and craft paper. So if you want to know how to do that, stick around and show you how. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Okay, for this first one, I'm just going to take a pool noodle I got at Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut them in two inch lengths. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cork and I'm going to cut it into three equal pieces. And this doesn't have to be exact. You're just going to use three parts of this. And these ended up measuring about um, five and five eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to take a paper bag and it measures so that you know you got the same size I do. It's five and an eighth by nine and a half by three and an eighth. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up the end of it. Then I'm going to flatten it out and I'm just going to cut it straight across the bottom. Okay, then I'm just going to fold it in half and then I'm going to cut it in half. Now the end that's kind of um, torn up on the end, I'm going to take that bag and I'm going to turn it inside out so I can use the, the outside of it. Okay, then just kind of wad it up and then open it up again and wad it up again. You want it pretty wrinkled. It gives it a lot more depth. And then on this time, we're going to open it up again. We're going to kind of flatten it out. And then I'm going to do some little accordion folds in it, about half inch, so forward and backwards, all the way down to the end. And then just kind of crease those up a little bit. And then put your noodle inside of it and then put it halfway through. Just kind of make sure you got it even on both ends. And then start just gathering it around the noodle. Just kind of try to make it a little bit even. And then go ahead and tuck that end in. And then we're going to put that cork inside of it to hold that in place. Just kind of push it all the way down in there till it's flat. Then on the top, you can go ahead and gather it up and, and fold it right into the center of that noodle. These are pretty easy and they turned out pretty cute. And then I'm just going to take a stem and I'm going to stick it right down in the center. And I'm, I got these on Amazon. I'll give you the link for those. And just kind of glue them in a little bit. Just a little bit of glue around the edges of there. And then I'm just going to take a leaf that I got at Hobby Lobby. I bought a package of them and um, glue that on. Actually, I didn't buy a package of them. I bought them on a, on a vine. And then for the tendril, I'm just going to take a dowel stick that's quarter inch by six inch and I'm going to wrap it all the way around it, kind of give it the curl. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, fold it in half and I'm going to go ahead and take those ends and wrap them a little bit more. And then I'm just going to twist those two ends together and then I'm just going to cut my um, tendril off right in the center. And then I'm just going to fold it over and stick it down inside of my pumpkin. This is a really easy project. Okay, these were super easy to make. They look good. Let me know in the comments what you think. These would look great on a place setting for a party or anything. You can put them anywhere. Okay, for this one, I'm just taking a regular grocery bag. It measures 11 by 17 and an eighth by 6 and 3 quarter. I'm going to open up the bottom of it. Okay, once you got it open, go ahead and... Um, Cut the bottom of it off so that you have an even straight line. And then fold it back up because it'll be a little bit easier to cut the strips if you have it folded back up. Then I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm just going to take it at the edge and I'm just going to draw the lines for one inch. And you're going to go all the way down the bag like this. And then just go ahead and take a pair of scissors and just start cutting out all your strips. I'm going to take a styrofoam ball. It measures 3.8 inches and I'm going to cut the bottom of it off. Now I ended up cutting about three quarters of an inch off. I came back in here and cut a little bit more. Okay, next I'm going to take my paper. I'm just going to cut it open and then I'm going to start folding it up. And I'm folding these about three quarters of an inch and I'm going to do eight folds. And that's going to be for each one of my flowers. And then I'm going to open it up and then I'm just going to um, fold it up and kind of wrinkle it up a little bit. This kind of breaks down the fibers a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold it in half long ways. And then I'm going to put my folds back into it. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of them and attach them to my styrofoam. And we're going to fill this thing up pretty full. 
But go ahead and spend some time and get your flowers all ready and then you can start doing it pretty fast. I'm going to take a stem just like the one I used in the first video and I'm just going to stick it right down in the top of it. And then go ahead and glue your stem in. And then just keep making your flowers and keep going all the way around until you have it full. Okay, and then after I got farther into it, I figured out just to go ahead and wad up the strips before you start cutting them. And it made it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. Okay, once you get your flowers made, it goes pretty fast. And this would be a great, um, just to set at the t at watching TV and making these little rosettes. And then you can put it together pretty fast. But all in all, I used one and a quarter bags to make this entire one. Okay, and then on the bottom, I'm going to attach a piece of felt, just so you don't have that roughness right there. Just kind of glued it glued on there real good and then when you start putting the bottom pieces in it'll all tie in and close up you just really kind of want to work on getting all the green area covered up and next i'm just going to take some greenery i took these little it's a little leaf bundle i got at hobby lobby and i'm just going to glue these three together And then go ahead and just glue them on just at the very top and then we're going to put some glue underneath them too but not you're not going to just mash them down but find the part that looks the best and then glue it down and then we're just going to put a little bit of glue just underneath each leaf and then just like the little pumpkins we're going to take that same wire and make some tendrils for this and i'm going to make three of them on this and i'm just wrapping it around a quarter inch by six inch dowel stick and i'm going to make three of them And each, up, each one of them ended up being about two inches in length. Okay, then we're going to wire them all three together and then add them to our pumpkin. Yeah, I think that turned out so pretty. Let me know in the comments what you think and which one of these is your favorite today. This one really did take a little bit of time, but it sure was worth it. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure and give me a like. It really helps my channel. Thank you. Okay, for this next one, I'm just using a couple styrofoam eggs, some Waverly hazelnut chalk paint, and I'm going to stick a dowel stick into the bottom of my egg to hold it so I can paint it. And I'm just trying to get close to the color of the burlap that I'm going to be putting on this. And you don't have to use a styrofoam egg. You can use a plastic egg or whatever because we are covering them. And then I'm going to take my egg and I'm just going to trace it out on my burlap. Just on the outside edge of it. And then I'm going to cut out four of these. And it doesn't have to be rocket science on this. Just doesn't, It doesn't have to be exact. Just get it cut out and because it will get covered up. Just make sure that it does cover at least a fourth of the egg. Okay, then we're going to start attaching it. So I'm coming down at the little skinny end on my egg, and I'm just going to glue this right in the center. And you're not going to go all the way up to the top part of the egg. You're going to leave a little bit open at the top because we are going to wrap these here in a little bit. And you're just going to glue down two sides in the top part and then just push it on there it, and um, it'll go on there pretty easy. Just make sure that it is glued flat. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the opposite, opposite one. I'm just going to go on the opposite side of that one, glue that one, meeting this one. 
and then go ahead and glue it on the sides and the top as well. And don't worry so much about fraying. This is going to be perfectly fine because that those two sides are going to get covered up. And you can pull some of the frays out. It's not going to hurt a thing because we are going to cover it up as well. And then you're going to do the same thing for the second, the opposite sides or the two sides. We're just going to come in down at the bottom and do the same thing like we just did the two sides that we just did. Next I'm just going to take some 5 inch strips of craft paper and I'm using a roll that's 36 inches in length. You don't have to use a roll that big. You can um, attach, you can use shorter ones and I'll show you how you can attach them. But I'm going to cut several strips. Okay, next I'm just going to wad it up real good. I do, you want to make sure that it's wrinkled because this does break up the fibers in the, in the paper and it makes it a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm just going to kind of squish it together because I just want one little skinny little log on here all the way down. And then we're going to twist it as we're going to glue it. So just kind of get it as tight as you can. And then when we start attaching it to the acorn, we're going to start twisting it. And go ahead and grab your acorn and we're going to kind of come right about maybe two to two and a half inches from the top. And we're just going to start gluing this in and we are going to twist it as we go. Now we're just going to go all the way around and keep spiral spiraling up all the way till we get to the top. And you're going to go through several strands of this paper as you're going. Okay, but as you're going, just keep twisting it. And you kind of want to make sure it's a little bit tight, but not too tight. Just kind of keep twisting it as you're going around. And then glue it in. And just kind of make sure that you are you are going straight on your first line across there. That's why I keep picking it up. Just make sure that your first line is pretty straight and the rest will be um, pretty easy to go. So I'm just going up on my next ledge and I'm just going to keep going all the way till I get to the very top. But do make sure that your paper is pretty tight together that you don't have any gaps between layers because you don't want to see anything through that. You want it to be all one solid piece. Just keep twisting and going up to the top. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to add in another piece of, um, of that same paper here in a second. Okay, so now I'm adding another piece. I'm just kind of overlapping it a little bit. Just kind of squeeze it in there so it does still look like it's still part of the twisted piece. And then just keep going all the way to the top. And these really didn't take that long to make. I really think that these would be a real good craft fair seller because they were inexpensive to make and you can make a lot of them pretty quick. And you can use the bigger um, eggs. You don't have to use that styrofoam edge like I was saying earlier. You can even use smaller eggs. And when you get to the top, go ahead and put a stem in there. And I just got these little wooden stems from um, Dollar Tree and just keep gluing it in until you go all the way around. But go ahead and glue your stem in. And then you're going to go ahead and finish wrapping your paper around it to hide that opening. Next I'm going to take three little strands of jute and I'm just going to run it down where those divisions were between that um, burlap. So just put a little bit of glue at the top there. And you can use a thicker jute if you want to. I just wanted to use a contrasting color and that's the only size that I have. So just go ahead and glue it up there and then we're going to glue it right around the edge there following that curvature just to cover that up. Okay, then my third strand came off. Just go back in there and just glue that down if that happens to you. And then just cut, follow the curvature on down each other of the other sides. And then we're going to crisscross at the bottom when we get down there.
This just kind of really cleans it up a little bit. Okay, and then see how we're going to do an X along the bottom, like you're going up the opposite side. And then on the other side, you're going to come down and meet those two points. And this would probably have been a little bit easier had you had a little bit of thicker jute. So if you have another contrasting jute that's a little bit thicker, I would go ahead and use that. And then just glue that down. Next, I'm just going to take some Truffle um, Waverly chalk paint and a chip brush, and I'm going to kind of dab the paint off of my paintbrush and kind of dab it around there. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of texture. I'm not trying to paint the entire thing, just to give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of texture. And just keep brushing around there until you get it, but just don't put too much paint on it. And these chip brushes, I'll give you the link for these in the description below. You can buy like a hundred of them for under ten bucks, but I do wash mine and save them. I think these turned out so pretty. I mean, for a paper craft project, I thought that they really turned out well. If you liked them, let me know in the comments which one's your favorite today. This next one, I'm just taking one of the Dollar Tree styrofoams and I'm just cutting a circle into the opening. I'm just taking some craft paper. This measures 36 inches in length and I'm cutting them in five inch um, little strips. And you could use a paper bag for this too. If you open up a big paper bag, it's more than 36 inches once you get it cut open. But you're going to cut several strips and just go ahead and wad them up. We're going to kind of break up the fibers in these, wad them up a couple of different times because we do want them to be wrinkled because they are, it's easier to use when the fibers are broke up. And then I'm just going to start twisting it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the um, end of it and I'm going to tuck it up underneath the ledge there. So go ahead and tuck it up underneath the ledge and just hold it until it dries. And then go ahead and twist all the way down till you get to the bottom and you're going to cut it off right about there at the end of the pumpkin and then glue that part down too. And you're going to continue to do this all the way around. So you're going to have quite a few of these little um, paper rolls to do. And I'm starting on one side, going to the opposite side, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other two. And just try to get it as full as you can. Start on the curved areas first. The ones that have indents on them, kind of fill those areas up first, and then you can start filling in on the other areas. Just kind of keep going, but just make sure that you are twisting it. And you don't have to twist it as, as tight as I did on mine. If you want it to not to have to use as much paper, you could twist it a little bit looser. But just keep going and kind of do it in sections as you're going around so you can make sure that you don't have too much in one section at one time so you can make sure you still get those up through that hole. And right there, I'm just coming down the center part where the grooves are, and then I'm going to fill in here in a minute where the other part is, the, the hump part. And this really didn't take that long. If you go ahead and cut your strips and have them already twisted up, it goes really fast. And when you get to this point, you're just going to start filling in in between. And you may have a little bit of overlapping on the top. It's not going to hurt a thing. When you get it completely filled in, we're just going to put a stem right down in the center of it. For the tendril, I'm just going to take some wired jute and I'm going to wrap it around a um, three quarter inch dowel stick. And then go ahead and pull it off there. Go ahead and wrap it around your stem. Kind of figure out how what length you want it. Kind of twist it up and then go ahead and cut it off. And then just go ahead and overlap them to hold them in place. And then we're just going to put a little bit of glue in there just to hold them together. Just kind of underneath them. Okay, next I'm just going to attach two green leaves to the top part of it. Kind of overlapping. And I just cut these off of a flower arrangement that I had. And then I'm adding two little pine cones. And then to finish off the bottom, I'm just going to add a round circle of felt. 
I really like the way that turned out, just plain and simple. Anything with craft paper is pretty easy to do because it's pretty readily available. If you like these kind of videos, be sure and give me a like today. And if you want to see future videos like this, be sure and like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified when I have a new video upload. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it.